you. We are live and it's Watercolor Wednesday. And my name is Gabriel Stockton. And we've got something a little different today. We're going to talk about Pace. I just got back from Pace, which is the plain air convention. And I didn't get to stay for the whole thing because uh, I also teach here in San Diego. And so what's really cool is, hey, Doc, glad to have you here. I went and I had the opportunity to uh, be at the booth for Cheap Joe's uh, as an exhibitor for watercolor. And uh, this is one of the paintings I did for my demo, which is actually here in San Diego. So this year's uh, plein air convention was at Colorado, and it was the 10-year birthday anniversary. And um, yeah, it was a super good time. If you're not familiar with Plain Air Magazine, you should definitely check it out. I believe I have some really cool, I'm gonna show you some of the swag I got, um, and some of the things I, I bought while I was there at Pace. And if we have some time left over, I'm um, going to definitely do a painting. All right. So this was my lantern that I wore over at the event. Here is a book that I highly recommend. For the last three, four years, I have been uh, working with this book as a digital copy. And I finally got my hands on the hard copy. And this is Eric Rhodes here, a handsome guy that wrote this book. So if you're looking for a book, and I'll put it in the link on how to make more money selling your art, uh, I highly recommend it. This book has changed my life. I have a book club group that we have been going over this book for the last three years and we've kept in touch since all right moving on and i will do an extensive book review my next book review i've got some other really good books to also share and again if you're just now coming on hello and welcome i'm talking about pace this was one of my demos i have another demo i'll show you here late shortly but let's look at some other cool stuff I got uh, while well, I picked up another wonderful thing. This guy right here. Do -do -do. And we've got the John Panoshny, uh Unlimited Ultimate uh, Palette. This is a book that all goes over color. And again, I will do more of an extensive uh, book review on this. I just got it, so I'm still reading through it. And I'm still taking some notes on what I want to share in the highlights. Uh, this is John here. Uh, he has done some amazing work here. There is also a video that goes with this book. And I'm waiting for it to come in the mail. I did order the video. And it came with this really cool uh, clear plastic deal. I haven't opened yet. Um, doo -doo -doo. Let's open this puppy up. So I have not opened this, obviously. So I'm going to give it more of a review uh, probably next week. So you have this little surface here and you actually take this and you put it over one of the exercises like so and you do this painting, I believe. And I could be wrong because again, I have not had the opportunity to read the whole book. I just read what I could on my flight back. So again, this is the limited palette, unlimited, limit, limit palette, unlimited color. And um, yeah, 
I will put a link for this also in the description in a couple days. All right. I did get some paper. Uh, Cheap Joe's was kind enough to give me uh, some paper at the booth to work with. Do, do, do. And it's this Kilimanjaro. Um, so this is a cold press. And I did a painting just so you guys can see how it came out. Uh, this is by Joe Miller, and it's a 140 pound, it's bright white, and uh, it's cold press, 100% cotton, and let me grab the painting that I just did. Bum, bum, bum. So we all know those times we're stuck in the airport. Well, this is what you do, and if you haven't followed me on Instagram, or Facebook, you can actually see the process of this painting. So here we have a wonderful airplane scene. Um, as I was saying, when I was out at Pace, Denver, Colorado, thank you so much. I love, oh, Scarlett says, I love Kilimanjaro paper. Yeah, it's really nice, especially this bright white. Um, super good. But yeah, there's a nice little plane right there. And uh, hey, you know, instead of fretting and getting all wound up that maybe something, for some reason, there's a delay for your flight, uh, I highly suggest you just get out a pencil and start doing some sketching. Hmm, I lost you. Well, I'm here. I hope you are able to come back. All right, so dun, dun, dun. it's not available in the UK. Well, I'm sorry. I did not know that. Um, there are some other comparable papers. You could probably get your hands on some Fabiano Artistico paper. Oh, hey, glad to be back, coach. All right. There's some other cool stuff. So everyone that attended the event got one of these cool bags. Uh, let me back up just a little bit more. Nice little bag. And uh, all this goodies were in here. There's a nice little zipper pouch inside here. And it just goes over your shoulder like so. Do, do, do. <laughs> no, I'm not going to model it. But there you go. Check it out. Pretty nice, good size, embroidered patch on there. Pretty cool. All right. Some other stuff I came back with from Pace was this super cool poster. Let's see if we can see it. So this was in celebration of the 10 years. Check that out. So this is San Francisco. Uh, this was from the Pace from 2018, and it was by Daniel uh, Sparrick that did it. Bum, bum, bum. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Plain Air Magazine. All right. So we come on over here. Um, and that bag came with some oil paint. I uh, believe there's, let's see, one, two, three, four, five. And uh, I just got lucky, and this was in my luggage, and it made it back. Um, I typically don't bring oil paint back. Uh, I got some cool stuff from Cheap Joe's working at the booth. Um, actually, this cake, uh, it looks like a little cake soap, but you put this little thing in water, and it uh, it's a... It's a little hand towel. That's pretty cool. Uh, this is uh, definitely helpful. So this is a water bowl. And you can open it to be bigger or smaller. So it opens up like so. It actually opens up a lot more. Here we go. Dun, dun, dun. And it opens up more. Holy cow. 
Look at that. It's brand spanking new. I only used it the one or two days. So, yeah. Well, here's a little measurement right over here. So this is one, two, three, four, five. Five, four or five inches tall. And one, two, three, four, five. And radius. Dun, dun, dun. Just did a painting on Kilimanjaro yourself. That's awesome. Nice little sponge. As you know, some of you, I use a sponge on my palette. All right, let's see what else we got here. Um, some of the artists handed out things like, uh, well, Ryan Jensen handed out this really cool card. Uh, actually, his daughter handed it out to the crowd after. So at the Plain Air Convention, there's people giving demos, and you can see their demos. Yeah, I scored on that one. I heard that Kilimanjaro sketchbooks are great. Yes, I highly agree. There was this wonderful lady that came up, talked to me while she was doing a demo. Uh, Melissa Author. And this is her painting. And she's in this. This is 100 Years of Rocky Mountain National Parks. The live, live in the dream. So this talks about the national parks. It showed a few. Uh, showed this gal here, Melissa, uh, in the park painting. So... She wanted to share that with me. That was nice of her. There's a couple other demo things that came out. I was super excited. Some of you know I have the good old Gorilla uh, Painter's Box. And there he was. The man himself was also there. So here we are. The Cigar Box, which is one of my faves. Super good. Super good box. They actually now make their own picture frames. Plain air uh, frames, Gorilla, and they're really inexpensive. And these are all the sizes, and you can get uh, uh, bundles. So here's the type of frames. I'm definitely going to invest in some of these because they will ship it to you for free, and you get a killer deal. And I don't have the pricing on me right now. But just go to the website that you would normally go for the Gorilla Boxes. This is the same people that make the Gorilla Easel are making the Gorilla uh, Frames. And uh, what do we got here? Do, do, do. Yeah, I mean, there's just a whole bunch of stuff here. Oh, this gentleman uh, here. Uh, he, uh, has a he sells these different papers. And a uh, real nice guy. Uh, you could probably, you know, get all this information um, if you pre if you rewatch this after I <laughs> load it. Oh, this guy was neat. Uh, so these are people that had booths. This gentleman here, Wayne, he had this cool looking easel. It weighs about sixteen pounds. It folds up, and you could take it out plain air painting. So he designed this because uh, this thing, he was having uh, just, you know, wasn't comfortable outside painting. And so he designed this plain air uh, sawhorse uh, easel. And there's some pictures of it there as well. And this must be their uh, basic design because yeah here's the one with the pads and the cups and all that good stuff so yeah my easel yep and by design yeah so super nice dude uh was i don't know if i'll get one um uh, here we got another patch that came in that swag bag which is pretty cool We've got some Stonehenge for oil painting. But I'll probably use this for my gouache. And uh, we'll, we'll, I'll test it out, and then maybe we'll use it for a watercolor Wednesday. For a little mini. What do you think? Give me a thumbs up or drop a comment if you want to see me paint on this Stonehenge. Bum, bum, bum. All right. What else we got here? Oh, yeah. We scored a keychain. Look at that. 
plain air keychain. What else we got here? To do? Yeah, just like some more information. Uh, there's a whole bunch of these nice little handouts. I'm just gonna show them to you. What came through? Bum, bum, bum. I did not plan this. I'm just showing you guys what all came out of here. And uh, look at, oh, this is like the Lost Sky Ranch. Wouldn't that be a cool place to go paint? For sure. LostSkyRanch.com. Someone won a, uh, a thing to go there. And that was pretty cool. Uh, we got Michael uh, or Wick. Um, there he is. Bum, bum, bum. He's a, a painter up in Beaver, Oregon. Here's another one of his flyers. I guess he teaches some oil painting classes. Here's another DVD that came in the swag bag. That was pretty cool. Stefan, he's he's a super cool dude. He, he's known for these amazing landscapes. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah. All right. That's PBS. Um, this was a cool golden ticket thing. There's some, like, oil paints. Um, uh, these folks. As this is a watercolor show, I'm gonna keep rolling on through. Um, oh, Deborah Hughes. Her Hughes Hughes. Um, she has these signature colors. Bum, bum, bum. Paint like a pro dot us. But I know you guys are all watercolorists. Here's another cool package from the Hugh and Skelly Gallery since 1989. That's my college days. And um, it looks like it's a little booklet. So I didn't get to go through this whole swag bag all week. There's a sticker. There's some other info. Oh, it's a little booklet. Oh, these are their uh, artists. Yeah. Nice. Oh, Camille Preswick. Oh, that's cool. Mark Shasa. Yeah, good stuff. Yeah, I love these dudes. Oh, there's my buddy Dan Marshall. Yep, there they are. The ladies themselves. Boom, boom, boom. All right. Well, hopefully YouTube is letting everybody know that we're on and rocking and rolling through all this swag. Uh, I'm going to show you. Oh, did you guys see the video, interview video? Give a thumbs up if you saw the video with Richie uh, Vios, um, who I ran into. Uh, got a tons of magazines here. Uh, actually, there's Richie right there, the back of Richie. And, uh, look at there. Wow. Fine Art Connoisseur. This is also by Plain Air Magazine, if you didn't know. What a lovely guy he is. Richie? Oh, yeah, for sure, right? Here is the actual, uh, program. And, uh... Yeah, I'll just flip through this real quick. Here are some of the streamliners. These are all the amazing people that help put it all together. And I was so excited. Um, again, there's Eric Rhodes with the book I showed you. Uh, Kelly Kane, who is adorable and amazing. All these people are Sherry Dawes. Uh, oh my gosh, I could just go on and on, all these great people. I finally got to see Berkeley, and I got to see, I I didn't see Allie, uh, but someday, um, yeah, there's so many more people in here. Um, here's some of the videos. This was the layout of the convention. Here uh, is the itinerary. Here we are. And, uh, yeah, here's the schedule. So they're super organized. There's a bus that takes you to all the painting spots. 
Um, uh, there's Eric painting in the water. So you get all this wonderful information about all the different artists and uh, what stage. Whether there was a there was a stage for pastel, there was a stage for watercolor, there was a demo stage for the main stage. I think I passed it. Dun dun dun. Here we are. There was a stage for watercolor, the demo stage, the pastel, and uh, Avaro Casanet was there. I got to see him paint. Uh, I got to see. Oh, uh, I got to see Barber Tap. Not demo, but I got to uh, have dinner. Well, quick, fast, <laughs> maybe like. Oh, Emily Olsen. If you're a big YouTuber, you should know Emily Olsen. She was there. And look who else was there. Jane. Jane Seymour. Dr. Quinn. Uh, yep, and... Camille Proswick with Lori Putnam was there. She actually taught the first day. We had Jean, uh, Jean Stern there. Dun, dun, dun. There's Richie Varos, Varos that we just did the interview with on last Monday. We had done an interview already with Barbara Tapp. If you haven't seen that, you should see it. Haiti was there. I was like, what? I was like starstruck. Uh, oh yeah, Michael Holter was there. We got a chit chat. There's Ryan Jensen. I mean, I can go over all Jane Hunt. Come on, Paul Crowder, who I got to watch his demo. Super, super cool oil painter. I could just go on and on. Pierre was there. Uh, Michelle. Oh my gosh, I had to get a picture with Michelle. Mark uh, Feltman was there. Charlie was there. And I met Rich for the first time, which was super cool. And I could just go on and on. I tried to go over to Albert, but he was so surrounded the whole time. It was amazing. Uh, yep, there's Alvaro Casanet. Uh, Michelle, I got a picture with Michelle. I was super stoked to ha talk to her. There's Dawn. Dawn was already teaching. I got to see my buddy Jed Dorsey. And many, many more. And I if I miss somebody, I'm so sorry. But uh, yeah, so that was the program, and which was also sponsored by Raphael Brushes. A lot of sponsors, actually. Actually, there's a whole page of just amazing sponsors. Princeton Brushes, Arches, Blick, Windsor Newton, even Daniel Smith. Uh, we had Rosemary Brushes, La Papa, a Plain Air Painters were there. Oh, and the workshops of France were there, who I'm about to apply for to uh, teach with. Uh, so many, so many. Strathmore, Cheap Joes. Uh, yeah, just tons and tons. All right. Well, that's. That's magazines. There's a whole nother. Uh, check this out. I got me a brush. And no, it's not a watercolor brush. It's an Aspen acrylic and oil brush by Princeton. Uh, this was free. This was in that bag, you guys. You get all this great stuff. And it's a flat, which, you know, I will hold this at the end. And maybe do some loose stuff. I, w I could definitely use this with gouache. Um, and maybe being really rough on a watercolor. If I needed to pull something out. But uh, yeah. Good stuff. What else we got here? Let me just grab the last of this bundle. And I want you guys to see the other painting. Alright. We've got. There's this. Uh, Missa. Um, they have classes and whatnot. That's pretty cool. Who's this? This is an artist's card, maybe. Buffalo. All right. And what's this here? Bum bum bum. Plain air. Do you want to be smart and scan me? All right. Um. Yeah, I think that was for. 
Oh yeah, there we go. We've got this one. If you want to go on trips, there you go. Go on painting trips. There's Michelle. All right, we've got Raja. All right, who demoed? Yep, that was one of the demoed artists. We got a golden ticket to something. Bum, bum, bum. I'll have to scratch it later. And we got, uh, oh, Jack, uh, some oil paint. What we got here? We got the Art Trump. Nice. And we've got another art festival coming up in September. Oh, in Utah. If you're in Utah. Oh, yeah, this is what I wanted right here. Nice little sweet sticker. Uh, you guys know I love stickers. And this lovely thing right here. That's a good time. Airline instructors. Boom, boom. Good thing to have. HM. All right, some more oil paint. You know, at this event, there's not just, um, you know, plain air is my happy place. And this is by Emily Olson. Oh, yeah. If you are not uh, following Emily on YouTube, she's a YouTube sensation. Um, she's actually going to let me do an interview with her. I asked her, and... And we've got um, some other cool people that said yes. We got another retreat. That was my hotel key. We talked about this guy with my easel. Bum, bum, bum. So he's comparing his easel with all these other horse easels. I'll bring that a little closer. You can do a little screenshot of that bad boy. All right, you can back up the video later if you missed it. We've got another artist that uh, Mr. Brown who demoed. Oh yeah, check out We've got a cool little flag. That's right. Uh, we've got some other brochures for Robert and Strathmore. Bum 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 and. Oh, cool. We got Lori's info. Very nice. Value, design tips for landscape painting, a pocket guide by Jane Hunt. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Very nice. I'm going to put that in my pocket right now. All right. We've got Plain Air Festivals. Bum, bum, bum. All right. Canuga, you want to go Canuga? Let's go. And we've got some more info here. Bum, bum, bum. Linda Grover, all right. And Plain Air. Oh, th no, this is Laguna. If you're not a member of Laguna, scan that right now. Hit a screenshot. You should become a member of La Papa. Yeah, another one of the artists that was showing. We got Doug Donson's info in here. And call for entries. And American uh, Impressionist Society. If you don't know about them, you should look them up. Bum, bum, bum. We got one of Michelle. Yeah, look at that. She's amazing. There we got Charlie. Charlie. Dun dun dun. All right. Forgotten Coasts. Wrapping it up here. Costa del. Uh, all right. You got all these people. Andy Evans. Keiko Tanabe. Nice. Bum bum bum. Workshops in France. This is the one I've been telling you guys about. This is the one I'm applying for uh, and hope to take you guys with me. Someday I talk to the ladies at the booth and uh, we hit it off really well. And uh, yeah, good times. Oh, I guess there's one last magazine here. 
Then I'll show you another demo painting and something tragically happened to it on the way back. And I want to tell you about it. It's gnarly. But uh, look at this. We've got the wish book. This is a paint tube. So if you have a uh, fire stick, Amazon fire stick, you can look up paint tube and download some of these movies, I believe. Um, so here's just a ton, a ton of movie or videos on how to paint. And uh, I bought just bought this one by Ching Chong Wei. Uh, really good video. I really enjoyed it. Uh, there's a couple of them in here. And uh, yeah, here's some information. So uh, Eric's got a video that you can get to on learning your values and whatnot. Kevin McPherson's. Uh, yeah, there's just a whole bunch of good videos in here. Oh, there's a Deborah Hughes movie video. Uh, yeah, there's just like, I can go on and on. If you want to do some gouache, there's Mike's video. Sorry if I'm going fast. Again, you could pause these. Hey, we got Michael Holter. He's over here. Paints with Daniel Smith and Cheap Joe's. All right, bum, bum, bum. good stuff, good stuff in here. So yeah, here's the group that was down in Colorado. Do, do, do. Yeah, here's Joe, I just showed you that book. Plus he's got the video you can get your hands on. All right. Bum, bum, bum. All right. You got Pastel Live coming up if you guys are just here on a whim. There's Richie's uh, Vios. We interviewed him. He will, um, he has that video with them. Dan Marshall. Couple Dan Marshalls. Andy Evans. Keiko Tanabe. Ching Chung Wee. There he's standing by the painting that he demoed. Very nice. Oh, uh, Francesco, remember that? Fontana, we interviewed him. Uh, if you haven't seen his video, watch his video. Hey, there's my buddy, Lauren McCracken. We interviewed him here uh, on our channel. Those are both of his. So you can get his videos for less than 100 bucks. Bum, bum, bum. I just saw an artist on that last page that... He just agreed recently to uh, me interviewing. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, Cesar Santos. Great, great artist. That's someone we can get on here for sure. Bum, bum. Interview him. There's Alex Steele. Yeah, Alexi Steele. Um, yeah, good stuff. Good stuff. Oh, there's Albert. Bum, bum, bum. And pastels, watercolor, oil, you name it. All right, so what did I do with my... Um, all right, so if you're just now coming on, this was my demo over at the Pace Convention, the Plain Air Convention. Not in front of thousands of people. I was uh, set up over at the booth for Cheap Joe's art stuff because I have an upcoming show or upcoming demo. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Jeez. I have an upcoming Zoom with Cheap Joe's. And so I was there to promote my upcoming course that's in August. And it's August 21st, 22nd. We take a day off. And the 24th. The reason why we're taking a day off, I give you some time to paint. And they're not long Zoom days. They're, they're like these shorter days. So that the price is definitely affordable. If you go on to the Cheap Joe's website, uh, you just, where you would search for like paper or paint, you 
Oh, Doc, are you going to? Right on. If you put in Gabriel Stockton and press search, my class comes up. All right. Now, this was demo uh, number one on the first day I was there. And then we've got demo number two. But, okay, I have to warn you about this. Something crazy happened to this painting. I don't even know. It is still soaking wet. Like, uh, something got uh, my painting wet in my luggage. And I'm going to have to... Uh, it faded it out. It's showing up a little bit darker on screen. But I know how it faded because this area right here was dark. And this was dark. And... I'm not sure what happened with this sky right here. And then uh, this was darker and this was lighter. So since this went light, because there is still moisture on this painting, I have no idea what happened. Uh, but <laughs> it's not all is lost. So if you guys were here uh, last week, or the week before, actually it was the week before, we went over my paintings uh, for uh, Italy. And this was uh, that similar scene of Verona. And so, you know, this painting is on... Uh, this is on Kilimanjaro... 300 and this one is on uh, Kilimanjaro uh, 140 so this one is drier than a bone and it turned out really well but this one is just still just soaking wet not completely wet but it's a uh, pretty damp so I'm going to let it completely dry out, and then what I will do is I'll spritz it just a little bit, and then I'll go back in there and put these darks back in here, because something happened. But this was actually, I did this on purpose, these lost edges, and so there you go, guys. I'm just going to be straight up with you. You know, things like this happen. Was it raining? No. What happened was a little bit of moisture. I put this in a plastic, you know, crystal sheet. And there was a little bit of moisture or water or something that got in there. And uh, made it all crazy, crazy wet. Um, there was one other thing. Oh, I did take this. I took this painting with me. Um, so it's good to take... Well, I took several paintings with me. I took some paintings. Sorry about this little thing in the way. Um, I took several paintings with me. and But this one in particular, because we had my dot cards I was passing out. And we had my paints for available for sale that are on my dot card. And I was explaining to people that were wondering about Daniel Smith about the colors that I like to use to paint rocks. And this color right here is the Goethite. This color right here is the Burnt Tiger's Eye. And then we've got some Tiger's Eye. And then there's things of lavender splattered on here. And then we've got Sleeping Beauty. All right in here. Did you paint anything about Colorado? I did. I did paint a Colorado painting, but I think it's it's not. I can't grab it right now. So I will. How about I do this? How about I share it next week with you guys? And so, but yes, I was there for two days. Those guys are still there. They're wrapping it up. I had to get back here to teach my beginners. Here at Art on 30th, um, I have 
Tuesday nights I teach. That class was jam full with 14 students. I had to get back here in time to teach them. So next year I'll plan and possibly work it out where I can be there and paint with those guys more than just two days. So, but yeah, thanks for asking. And then Thursday, uh, we have our intermediate course. And I believe I got one more spot left for the intermediate class that's this Thursday night. So if you're here in San Diego, hop into the intermediate class with us. And uh, yeah, there's uh, one other color that's in here is the, uh, the quick quinacridone deep gold right here and along that top part right here. I actually did this uh, for a demo for the local news and for the San Diego Watercolor Society. Dun, dun, dun. All right. Let's see. Where is... So this is the uh, contraption that I painted with. Uh, this is that Ericsson's easel, and it hooks right here to the tripod. And some of you that have been here with me, you've seen me paint with this thing. But if you're new, um, why this has these nice crispy edges is because this opens up and goes in there like that. And then we paint there's like a little gasket along here. So this holds it nice and tight. There's these clamps that go on here that don't get in your way. And that right there, knobby, goes right into my Manfrotto um, tripod, like so. So, but yeah, I've been really enjoying these nice little edges that it leaves. So the colors that I used for this was cerulean blue, and I used um, my goethite that you guys know I like. I used um, some pyro red. I used also some, um, oh, the, the tiger's eye. I used uh, a little bit of Sleeping Beauty and some moon glow and uh yeah all right moving along we have dun, dun, dun. all right so how are we doing on time here oh look at that we're ahead of the schedule that's perfect so one of the things we got going on is with that cheap Joe's, we've got the boats. Let me grab my pencil here. We've got an upcoming course in August, and we're going to do boats, bridges, and beaches. All right. And so one day we're going to do some boats. Another day we'll do bridges. We're going to take a break and do beaches. And not in that order. But if you've been wanting to learn how to do those things, uh, one of these boats will be in water. And the other demo will be out of water. The bridges, there'll be one bridge that's here in San Diego and one in Italy. And the beach, we're going to do one... Um, that's like a beach with some like uh, rocks and if we have time we'll do a beach with I'm thinking with a lifeguard tower all right and so there's a cool we went as a plein air group with the California Art Club and we went with the Salma Gundy and the San Diego painters, plein air painters, and we went to the old dam. And 
it was kind of cool. Uh, so I'm just going to do a little scene from that. So remember, we always choose to, is, it, is this a horizontal or a vertical painting? And I wanted a painting that was kind of nice, okay, and relaxed. So here we are. We've got a nice little horizontal. And my thirds is somewhere here for my composition. And then maybe somewhere in here approximately, okay. And then there was this little dam, like, uh, you know, a, an old dam for the dam up the water. And uh, the first thing I chose was to have that um, water somewhere coming down right here. Okay? And then right about here was this cool rock. And then it tapered back like this. This is the dam. Came like this and here, like so. And there was these cool um, plant-like things here. And then right here was another part of the wall for the dam. It came like this. And this was like a reflection here. All right. And then we've got the water coming down, splashing. The water was pretty high. So this isn't my first time painting over at this little spot. There was a little zigzag right here. And there was a big grove of trees going back here like that. Okay. Now there's a composition that... I think you should spend some time practicing, and it's called radial. What does that mean? There is a focal point, and everything else is pointing to this. Okay? You've probably seen this, friend, with a painting that's very familiar. You've got Mary here, and she's like this, and she's holding baby Jesus. And then right here is a person looking over Mary's shoulder, and another person looking over Mary's shoulder. Right here is like a lamb. Don't make fun of my lamb. And then right here is like another person. So everybody's eyes... Even Mary's eyes and the lamb's eyes and this dude's, you see the back of his head. Everybody is pointing their eyes at baby Jesus, okay? There was another cool, uh, famous painting that's out there. And there were three geese, all right? And one geese was here with his head down. There's another geese right here with his head up like this. And there was another geese where like this. And there, well, this guy's eye was here, this guy was here, and this guy's here. And right here was a little circle, and there was a little bug right here. And so this guy is thinking, if this guy duck or geese right here doesn't get that bug i'm going and this guy's thinking hey if you dummies don't get that bug i'm gonna get that bug and it's such an adorable adorable painting um so what i want to do here is this is going to be uh my focal point right here because right now, I'm going to put a nice chunk of dark right here. And then there's some lines kind of coming here with this, like, red rock. 
okay? So if you're totally lost, just hang in there, you'll see. So this is gonna be my widest of white areas. This is where the, the water is rushing down. And then the stream is like this, okay? So this is my focal point, all right? And then this area like that. So right about here, right about here, I'm gonna put a rock. That rock is outside of the water and of the dam, okay? This little area is nice and dark. And this is a just a little area back here. Now let's just add some values, okay? I got less than 10 minutes to show you what I am talking about. Um, for this example, I'm gonna use this Escoda Ultimo. This is a number 12. Let me just grab some water. The sky was pretty bright. So in this painting, I'm gonna leave that sky pretty white. And Gabriel, do you think you will ever come over to the Northeast? Yes, please. I would love to come up there, especially if, you know. Um, yeah, message me. Go to my email and email me. My email is info at gabrielstocktonfineart.com. Again, that's info at gabrielstocktonfineart.com. Let's talk. All right. I'm going to take a little bit of blue, put it right here, and take a little bit of this lovely color here. Uh, I accidentally picked up some green, sorry. So let's clean a little spot. Bum, bum, bum. There we go. Let's try that one more time. So I think there might have been a little green on my palette. There's the blue I want. Now we take a warm yellow, we're not going to get green. Okay. I'm gonna take that right there and just hit where this kind of would be my sky, like that. Now this grove area is just a lovely green. I'm gonna get a little bit of this uh, Sleeping Beauty, a little bit, just a little bit of that wonderful green appetite. Then some moon glow. And we're going to just darken that up. And just some tiger's eye. And look at that gorgeousness. Now, I'm going to do the tops of this uh, tree area here. And it comes down like that. But I don't want to hit that little top of my dam. I'm gonna come down like this, like that. Boom. All right. With that said, I'm gonna take, go back here and grab a little bit of that yellow here, yellow ochre, and just drop that in back here. Right there. I'm going to leave a little bit of white. We're going to leave some whites and then hit this guy. This is the edge of the other wall here. There's a little bit of ground coverage right here and a little bit of sand right here. Okay. Then we're going to take some of that Sleeping Beauty and this stew we got going on there and we're gonna just darken this up 
for our wall. We're going to leave a little bit of white right there. And here is our reflected shadow of that other wall, retaining wall of the dam. Okay. All right. Then we're going to take a little bit of Sleeping Beauty. I'm keeping it all in this mix, friends. Because I want, um, what I want, friends, is um, there not to be an alien-like color, okay? I'm going to put a little bit of this bottom water down in here. Take this out here, okay? Leaving some white right there, like that. Now, just with some water... Just putting water right like that. That's good for now. We'll come back. All right. And I'm going to get some um, of this. What is this? This is, oh, Minnesota Pipestone. And we're going to put in a little bit of that Minnesota Pipestone coming back and forth like this. Now I'm gonna drop in a little bit of some purpley stuff down in here because that's not purple enough. That's still kind of red. Sorry, I was mixing in a different area. Here we go. I'll mix over here so you can see. All right. This is a retaining rock wall. I'm gonna take a little bit of this, but I'm gonna fan it out like this and come down. There we go. And there. I gotta break up a couple of that so it's still. There we go. Boom. Just like that. Now, this is all in the shade, but I don't want to lose that nice well before I go there there's a little bit of nice green stuff right here first right here's a light a little bit lighter green bum 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 these trees are closer to us there's the I gotta leave that white for the retaining wall there's those trees coming over. Those trees drop down right here into this for grass. So you can do these little small things. This is called local color, friends. You are putting down, uh, this is a little bit more than just local color. This is more, we are mixing. Local color would be like blue sky, blue water, you know, brick, uh, dam wall, and we're not doing that business, but um, let's go ahead and put in this top water here. Bum, bum, bum. And there's some water there. We got a nice little zigzag, and this water is going to get a little bluer just right about here, and it's going to come up. Woo, that's really blue. Holy cow. Let me drop down to a smaller brush. Just because this is a smaller painting. We got a travel size uh, number 10 Perla. If I missed your comments, I apologize. I'm looking more at the painting than because I'm trying to get this knocked out for you guys just in time. All right, this uh, blue here. Bum, bum, bum. Like that. So with girl with the pearl earring, I missed that. I will I will check what whatever you just said. I just missed it, but I will check that question because the pearl the girl with the pearl earring. Oh my gosh. They just recently had like all these people paint that painting with like AI <laughs> and 
And some I, some people actually like did real painting. And it was pretty cool. All the different girls with the pearl earring. All right. We've got that retaining wall. And it's going to be kind of like a grayish blue over here. Just because it is in the shade. So it comes over right here like that. Like this. This is done nice and quick. I'm not dabbling. I'm going from my right to my left and back to my right. Drop a little more darker color in here. I'm going to leave that little white edge. Let's put a little green because there is a little tree right here. Not tree. There's some kind of plant in the water. Okay. All right, now we've got this water that's going to come this way and this one coming like this. There we go. This one is casting off some shade on this other side, just a little bit right here. Okay. That uh, casted shadow thing guy can go a little darker. Right here. Right like that. And like this. A little bit darker right there. I could spritz a little bit of water right here just so that we could activate some granulation. Okay. And then we've got a little section that gets a little bit darker right here, like that. We've got that rock, which we're just gonna get. Laura McCracken probably kill me on this one, but I'm gonna do uh, some Tiger's Eye and some Laura McCracken Black. I've never done this mixture. I'm so crazy to just try it in front of you, but let's see what happens. Oh, let's put a couple other little darks right there. And this gets dark. This comes dark right here. There we go. All right, I need some orange and a paper towel. So this paper towel here. A little more brighter orange, less water, and we're gonna do some little like bricks. That's really light. It's almost salmony, which is not what I was going for. So I need a little more oomph underneath that salmon color. There we go. This is that retaining wall. There were some nice little areas that were right here that were going up and down. And it kicked out little area here. So yes, I am going off of my memory of what this looked like. Of the painting I did do. There we go. A little more shadow it's back here bum, 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 to push that back this needs to go be pushed back here too there we go kick that back over there we're getting some distance in between these two rocks I need a warm yellowy color right about here over our wall. There we go. Sorry, I'm mixing that color where you can't see it. It's, I'm not trying to be tricky. <laughs> I just, I have another little spot I'm using that looks like that, okay? I just mixed that color right there. 
Well, we're four minutes over. If you want to keep hanging out with me, friend, while I finish this up, you're more than welcome. I understand some of you got other responsibilities, but we are almost done. You're welcome to stick around. Some of you are still here. Awesome. And let's go ahead and get this nice billowy water that's dropping down right here. Bum, bum, bum. And now I'm going to just lift this right here. Make it look like moving water. I let it set for a little bit. Now it's time to just lift and play and experiment. It's one o'clock in the morning. Holy cow. Wow. Cheers. Thanks for being up so late. I feel the love. All right, we've got this little thing here. And we are almost done. This needs to just go a little darker here, but not dark where it's going to take away. And then we're going to lead the eye back over this way with some visual communication. Boom, 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 like that. There we go. So when you do these little studies, it sets you up to win, okay? It's going to set you up. And I, I put a couple of their gray rocks here. This can go a little bit darker here, like that. Now that ridge is starting to really pop, right? So I just readjust this water here. We've got our, our lines coming back here at our, th our guy. Dun, dun, dun. Boom. Wow, this is and go even darker here. Look at that. But I don't want it to be solid. I want it, it's, it's a wall. It's old rocks. It can't be super solid. I can even drop in some orange in there because it's got the old bricks. There we go. Dropping down this in here. And then there's a little little bit of dark right in here. Like that. Ooh. So these little paintings, you could easily spend three hours on these little guys. They uh they like attention just as much as a big one. And they like details. And uh I mean I could even Remember our buddy Giovanni and his brush set? I mean, you can do these little paintings and get lots of detail, you know, with these. You know, look at this. Look at this little nice little square one. If I wanted to do it, cut into some little shapes. So, if I wanted to maybe, like, uh, cut this in a little bit better... With a little more detail, I can do that. But really, this wasn't meant to be a, like a full-on painting. But I'm really liking some of the granulation I'm already seeing. I can even start getting nerdy with some of those bricks. Yep. But, uh... Let me just go right over here and grab something I'm going to show you guys. And um, we will wrap this party up. Bum, bum, bum. There we go. You can use the side like this. So these little, you can do a little this. Or we can do these. 
like that. Nice, long, narrow, or this one's lighter, and then hit the tops of that paper for texture. So Giovanni would probably, he would probably even just go like this and start laying in some little bricks. Maybe change up the color a little bit, adding uh, some texture. Let's see what a bright red would look like right here. Bump, bump, bump. That's just a titch too much. All right. And then maybe another little dark right in here. What I want is this to look like the old dam. And there was a nice little gray chunk. Let's mix him up. A little bit of blue. A little more blue, almost lavender. Not quite blue, blue, but... There we go. He was right here. Almost getting, like, gouache, kind of like... And then put some of those over here, too. You can do some lilies. There were lilies there. Now I'm just having too much fun. There's a lily, maybe here. A lily here, and then I could put just a little highlight of white on that little lily, like that. Maybe another lily right over here. Some of those lilies have little yellow things. You can't get too yellowy because this is in the shade. All right, and then let's put, let's see, drop down just a little bit of dark right underneath that billowy of water. There we go. A little bit of billowy of water right here. Boom. And then that other brush he had, look at this guy, right here. And um, let's go ahead and just bring a little bit of love right in here. Look at that. Um, so we got all kinds of goodness going on right there. And just figuring out where I want to put it. Like that. Okay. So right under here is like you where you can actually see under the water. Where it's dripping over the rocks. And there were some areas that were just flowing right over. Blowing right over. Nice. There's a little bit of lovely, lovely little. There we go. And I think we need just a little more, a little bit of orange goodness in here. Look at this. Just work your way down. Maybe a couple in here reflecting. There we go. Let's uh, get a little lavender. I think it's time to get another tube of lavender. But we can make some with some sleep, with some, sorry, uh, ultramarine and some Chinese white. And we're going to just drop a little bit of that in here. And then over here, like that. And. I'm just kind of curious if we get a little bit of this black. I'm just I'm just wondering what happens if I do this. What if this thing had a black mat? I'm thinking it'd create like a kind of like a tunnel vision kind of thing. So this composition we're talking about radial design where we're getting your eye to go right there 
everything in this painting is pointing towards where the water is coming out from the dam. Okay. I normally don't frame my paintings in black mats. I usually frame all my stuff with a white mat. But I'm thinking with that little bit of sky, a black mat would make it look so cool. And make the shade area look pretty nice and shade-like quality. So I hope this was helpful. I'm looking over here. Bum, bum, bum. There's over here. Unless he's being shy. This is what I was talking about right here. This painting. See that? This is the San Diego Dam. And we've got the water coming out here. Oh, that's gorgeous. Thank you so much, Lion Pride. And then here is our little miniature of it. And uh, let's see if we can get them both on camera. Let me back this up a little bit. Uh, not quite. Dun, dun, dun. But yeah, you get it, my drift. So this one actually was painted on location um, last Saturday. And we just did this one right now. I like this one uh, with a white border. But this one just seems to be kind of have that nice tunnel vision thing going on. And that's what you want to do when you do a painting. You want people to go right to that focal point. So we have this nice visual communication that brings us over here. We've got a nice thing of dark here. We've got that repeat of visual communication and with a leather little dark. And then a little bit of repeat over here. So there's almost a line of communication going in this painting. We have a background, we have a middle ground, and a foreground. All right, all right. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate you guys. Thank you for stopping in. Um, my guest for next week's interview, uh, we're having Buffy Kaufman. Um, if you've been wanting to know about pouring... Uh, watercolor pouring. She's going to talk about watercolor pouring. We have not had an artist yet talk about watercolor pouring. So I'm super stoked um, for her interview for next week. So I appreciate you guys. I'm very grateful that you keep coming on. And again, the book uh, we were talking about, I will do a book review on this book and I highly recommend it. I've already read it, but I would rather spill it. Oh yeah, look at there. To Gabriel. Cool, cool. All right, well I appreciate you guys. You guys rock, keep your brushes wet, keep painting, keep doing your thing and keep encouraging the rest of the world to do art. All right. I appreciate you guys. Take care. Bye now.